Welcome to the recap of Feminine Miss India 2020, where three title holders were crowned to represent India internationally at United Continents, never heard of it, Grand and World. If you want to see more content on this year's contestants, click this episode that I will link up in the corner. And if you are brand new, please subscribe and hit the notifications so you're going to hear when new episodes just like this one are released. Before I get into this year's contestants, I have to mention this one thing. I saw somewhere online that this pageant was hosted in a hotel and somebody made the comparison that it was in a hotel ballroom just like Miss Universe 2019 prelims were and they showed the huge difference in the quality of the staging and the overall show and I couldn't agree more. I, it just makes me sad when I'm like, what are we doing Miss Universe? What's going on here? We really need to up the level of the quality of the show because I see youth pageants that are more glamorous than Miss Universe preliminary competitions and that makes me so so sad especially because I used to be a state title holder for them. The other thing that I'll mention is the dancing in this show because I have a question for all of my Indian viewers. I'm always impressed by the Indian dances and performances in the show and what really shocked me was this huge dance number that featured the outgoing Femina Miss India. Yeah. And her dance moves were so impressive to me and then all of the other contestants joined in. So my question is that is dance such a big part of Indian culture that everybody does it? Because I'm truly impressed by the contestants dance moves and I can't imagine a pageant in the US featuring some sort of cultural dance that everybody looked great in. I can't imagine it because in the United States, I wouldn't say that dance is a part of your everyday life or your culture. It's more of an elective thing. I personally grew up dancing, but not every American little girl grows up dancing. So that's what's always impressed me and I'm so curious about the connection to dance and Indian culture. Please share more about that in the comments below. I would love to hear about it. Now let's get into talking about the contestants. This was a very, very fast show. Oh my goodness, virtual pageants in a pandemic have really shortened down the showtime of pageants. That's something to say, directors. After all of this stuff and after everything opens up, there's no excuse for a five hour show. There's no excuse, okay? We don't need it, all right? We gotta keep things moving. So well done on all of those producers and directors that keep the show going. We had a very, very short gown walk for all of the contestants and someone did message me online saying that there wasn't as much of an emphasis on the evening gown walk for this competition because they understand that these are a lot of contestants who may have never done a pageant before so they don't want to place emphasis there. They would rather spend their time focusing on perfecting an evening gown walk for their national title holder and I was like wow that makes so much sense and it's a really really interesting way to go and to think about scoring for a pageant and what you can kind of do to find you know the quote unquote best title holder at a national level and then what you can do to help her best prepare for an international pageant. So we got to see the contestants walk a very 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 short shocking walk for me. I, I would love to have seen more but here's what we had and here are my thoughts. She was the first one out and that's when I figured out how short this was, but I really think that she had a very smooth evening gown walk. I wish she would have wore a different color, but I don't know if the gowns were sponsored and if she had to wear that dress. I will mention that it is really tricky to find the right evening gown. If you're a pageant contestant, you can relate, I'm sure. So that's why I created an evening gown checklist that I use when I do personal shopping and wardrobe styling for my own coaching contestants. And if you want access to that, just click the description below Below and you'll find a free download link. She really surprised me, but in a good way. Most of her images and photos showed her very serious or sexy, but then when she came out on stage, she seemed very happy and very present. She too was very happy and I would describe her walk as effortless. Very well done. Nothing crazy going on here. I felt that there was a lot of movement in her upper body and that's something that I could have done without, but nothing that would have really affected my scoring for her. But the judges did not seem very happy. I was like, oh my gosh, I thought I was a tough judge. Look at their faces. This walk was actually a little too casual for me for a gown. I really love contestants when they glide across the stage. She looked beautiful on stage, great gown for her, but this always reminds me, ladies, posture up. 
presentation is everything. Same sort of note, there wasn't anything outstanding to me about this performance, but there also wasn't anything that I was like, ooh, oh no, that wasn't great. She looked so beautiful. She was so close to being in my preliminary picks, and she just looks lovely on stage, so no surprise she advanced. Beautiful on stage as I expected. I just wish she would have held her eye contact with the judges a little longer. This walk and presentation seemed a little bit shy for me. I'm not gonna say that she walked. I feel like she strutted across that stage. I appreciate the hip movement and the energy that she always brings. She's consistent. She brought some hip movement too, and I was honestly surprised that she didn't advance just because of the judges' expressions. I felt like they really liked her. I love the happiness that she brings to the stage and her dimples. I'm such a fan. Can she compete anywhere else? I felt confidence the moment she started walking. I just wish she would have held her pose a little bit longer at the end. This styling and presentation really worked for me. She looked different and she stood out. She was one of my favorites for gown. Then we move right along to the top five. Woo, that was a hard cut. I was like, what? Why? I would have loved to have seen more of the contestants, maybe in another gown, something like that. Comment fast if you thought that that was a quick transition too. After they cut to the top five, each of the questions drew from a bowl and was asked a question by one of the judges. Let's go over their responses. I really want to commend her on this answer because I feel like it was a difficult one to think of off the top of your head and I felt like she was very prepared, but she didn't sound rehearsed and I appreciate that. They were asking her three things that she would change in India. She talked about taboo topics would be one thing and I was like, ooh, okay, you really, you really came out swinging. Then she talked about education and healthcare. And I couldn't really read the judge's expression when she said this answer, but I thought personally she did a phenomenal job. There was no way around this answer for me. It didn't even matter what she said. It was all about the presentation of it. And I felt that personally there were so many filler words that would have affected the way that I scored her. This was a very safe answer to a very common question, but I think that she did a great job with the presentation of it. I think she may have had the hardest question of all the contestants. She was asked who should be paid the most, a soldier, a doctor, or a Supreme Court justice. And there's so many ways that you can go about this, but she ended up choosing a soldier because they, they are defending the country. And I really think you could have answered anyway, as long as you supported your answer. And that's exactly what she did. And she spoke very, very well, absolutely loved it. Such a standout. Thank God for my friend Cherie, who was so kind to translate this answer for us. So the question that she was asked was if she could erase or preserve the year of 2020 from her memory, which would she do and why? And she said that everything bad happens for a reason. And when it does, it teaches us lessons. So I'll never erase bad things. I'll preserve them. I will learn from them and move forward. There will be ups and downs in life. It is upon us to learn from it and keep moving forward. And if you watched my favorites episode, you'll know why this answer makes so much sense for her. And I felt like it was so true to her. The delivery was amazing. She looked so comfortable on stage for me. Immediately when I heard this answer, I was like top three. Then the top five were all asked the same final question. The question that they asked the contestants is, are you religious or are you spiritual and what is the difference? And I felt like for a top five question, that could be really challenging because you could get really deep, really fast, and there's so many different ways to go with this. So it was interesting to hear the contestants' perspectives. She spoke very confidently and explained her answer. I liked it. I think it was a solid performance. Once again, I really couldn't get past the filler words, the ums and uhs. I really feel like that hurts a lot of contestants when it comes to interview and onstage question as I feel like it hurt her here. This was very well explained and I feel like in terms of presentation and the execution of it, it was on the level of our first contestant. She spoke very well, just like in her first answer, but what she did that nobody else did was to personalize it. And that is the point, ladies, take notes. Here was her answer. Spiritual is how much we are connected to ourselves. Religion is man-made. I feel as though I'm spiritual. My parents have always taught me since childhood, the more connected you are to yourself, the more love you have. The more love you have, the more love you can give to others. Beautiful, very, very well done. And when I heard the translation, I was like, oh, immediately in my top three, but I wasn't really sure where she would end up in a top three. 
or where I would place her. As I mentioned at the beginning of this episode, three contestants were chosen to select India internationally. Now here's my question for you. I want to know, is this a situation like Bini Bini Bilibinas where the contestants, once they reach that top three, the top five, the top six, whatever it is, however many titles they're, they're giving away, that they assign the contestant that they believe will be best suited for their respective international title. She would be best for this pageant, she would be most successful at this pageant. Or is it strictly based on points? The high point winner gets to go to world and then everybody else follows. I would love to know that about this organization. It was really interesting how the crowning went to me. They announced the first runner up and she apparently is going to compete at United Continents as far as I know. That's what I gathered from watching this competition. But I'm curious why they announced her as first runner up and not as Miss United Continents India. Then the next title holder we know was selected to go to Grand and of course the final and the major title some might say is the Miss World title. So I think that they did an awesome job selecting the candidates I really really wonder a lot more about how the contestants made that cut from the top 15 to the top five what was really different because I didn't see a preliminary competition so how did they get to that decision but once they were in the top five things did make a lot of sense to me for how everything played out I thought it was a really really well done show especially considering all of the circumstances of what's going on in the world and pageantry so well done I feel like our new Miss World India can do very very well at Miss World from what I know of that competition I just did my first recap for that show as well so I'm a newbie to the Miss World organization and I appreciate all of you sharing with me new things about it and let and helping me to learn lots more so that I can create better content for you and better recaps and better pageant predictions so thank you to all of you out there who have been a huge help to me I appreciate you I hope that you enjoyed this episode I hope that you're subscribed and that you'll come back for lots more and if you want to see anything special on this channel then leave your requests in the comments below